Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss Labour's general election campaign launch yesterday and why, if you con contrast what Labour are doing with the Tories, although Starmer and his colleagues obviously cannot get him complacent, an observer like me can be very, very comfortable that change is coming. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. Uh, so minor plug, first of all, as well, all very sneaky. I'd completely forgotten about this. Um, so on the Sunday roast, I had a little discussion with someone about uh, entry to or re-entry to the EU, re-entry to the single market, uh, which is which was published on the channel on Wednesday. I missed that. Uh, so I've put a link down below if you want to watch that. But going completely off topic. Uh, yesterday, Labour organised what can only be described as a grand manifesto launch. Now, I'm not going to talk about the details of what came in it in this video, uh, but I will be discussing that in the stream on Saturday. But this, this launch, it wasn't really a manifesto launch because there wasn't a manifesto, it, but it was basically a general election launch. Like if you woke someone up from a coma, been in a coma for a few years, and you said, right, first thing you're going to do is watch this. They'll watch it and they'll go, oh, it's the start of the general election campaign, is it? Oh, I've woken up just in time. Um, you would think it was Labour's manifesto launch. It had everything you would expect from such an event, with the exception of waving a pamphlet around. You know, you don't present things like this as loudly and as clearly as this unless you think this is actually going to form the cornerstone of your manifesto. You know, and there's a very interesting contrast right now between Labour and the Conservatives. See, while Labour were launching their policies to get the UK moving again, the Conservatives were yesterday indulging in their fight to prevent any policies occurring at all. Boris Johnson was shooting his mouth off again by saying that the best way forward with the protocol would be to pass the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill. This is basically saying that Sunak should not arrive at a negotiated settlement at all, which is not quite Johnson's position when he was in government, was it? I'd almost like to see him made Prime Minister again, just to see what the useless sack of spuds does when he can no longer promise unicorns from the sidelines. Imagine promising all these contradictory things, just as he did before we left the EU, only to find himself back in the position of having to follow through on his ridiculous base. I'm starting to think that Boris Johnson doesn't actually want to become Prime Minister again, despite the very strong impression he gives. You know, seriously, I am wondering if he just wants to ruin his successor, do his best to make sure the Tories lose really badly, say, well, I would have won if you'd have just stuck by me, then sail off into the sunset to make his millions talking crap on the speech circuit, as he's already been warming up to do. But anyway, when Star Starmer made his presentation, laid out his five platforms, or missions as he called them, platforms, all the Tories could do was post spoof platforms of their own. I mean, people do ridicule one another in politics. Of course we do. It's fun. But if there were anything fundamentally wrong with the policy announcements, wouldn't the Tories also have poked a few holes in them? One of the GBBs had a pop at Starmer. Guess what? Not wearing a jacket. He is apparently one of their political correspondents, what it says in his bio. And his insightful analysis was, Starmer doesn't appear to be wearing a jacket. This, this was a problem, apparently, because it's February. As if the environment inside a conference hall is different in February to July. I'm sure clever political analysis like that is worth every penny. The reality is, they know that these platforms were not chosen by some clique of like-minded people bouncing the same idea off each other's cavernous skulls as seems to be happening with the Tory governments of the past few years. They've been carefully formed around the people whose votes will propel them into government. You know, I remember in 2020, uh, 2021 it was, Starmer was just starting to introduce some policy ideas. I said at the time, they seemed a little vague. You know, they certainly didn't grab your attention. They were the result of having to present the idea that Labour had plans for government without constraining yourself too much with the detail, because you're still three years out from a general election where the public and economy could be in a very different place. But yesterday's launch was not vague. It was much clearer. And although we're not going to get the full details until the actual manifesto launches, the general policies were pinned down. These policy platforms are designed to address the major concerns of the voters, even if you or I might not share all of the concerns, or would not rate them quite so high priority if we did. The Tories know they cannot attack these, these platform areas because they are only partially Labour's policies. What they are is the public's policies passed through a Labour Party filter. 
You know, to attack them is to attack the voters whom the Conservatives also need to win. You know, the reason some people think there's not, oh, there's, there's not a lot of difference between Labour and the Conservatives in terms of their campaign platforms, it's not because there's no difference between the parties. There is a gulf between the parties. To compare all the measurable evidence of performance between the Tories since 2010 and Labour since 1997, it's like night and day. The reason some people see similarities is that the main platforms are not their manifesto. It's just part of it. And it's certainly not their entire work once in government. It's the small number of policy areas that they call out the loudest. And the reason they choose those policies to shout about is because they're aimed at swing voters. And it's the same swing voters the Tories target. So what you're actually talking about is the overlap between the two. So it's no great surprise that the loudest policies look similar. But for the attentive, if you read the manifesto, they don't look similar. If you observe their actions in government, that doesn't look similar. It's just that those loud policies that are blasted through the megaphone, trying to get through to people who are not that interested in politics, but who do vote and are prepared to change that vote from one election to the next. Where there is supposed to be a difference is in how each party intends to achieve what will look like common aims. But the Tories right now are like Labour in 2019. They're not even shouting about those same aims. As Labour talk about the economy and healthcare, the Tories are talking about small boats. As Labour talk about increasing community policing and improving opportunities, the Tories are coming up with ways to deal with their insane Brexit. The latest suggestion is that we should replace tomatoes with turnips. Bit of a sick joke because I can't even get turnips in my local area, I've looked. And as Labour talk about powering into the Green Revolution, the Tories are still fighting amongst each other over a deal that they all voted for three years ago. You know, when Keir Starmer became Labour leader, he said he was getting the party ready for the election in 2023. That is because although the election could take place in 2024, the Tories would have aimed to go to the polls in 23 if they were in a position to win. You don't leave it until the last year because unexpected events can be disastrous for government. Well, it is 2023 and he's launching his campaign. Whether or not we're having an election this year, it's like, I was ready for this point. I'm going ahead with it. Sod you. You know, for two years now, Labour have been talking about what they want to do in government. The details have taken time to form, but that's what they've been doing. It's also what they're going to be doing from now until the election itself. What have the Tories been doing? playing musical chairs in Downing Street. The Conservative Party continued to tie themselves in knots over Brexit. Europe was the issue that famously was said to be constantly dividing the Tories. So, cunning plan, we'll leave the EU on the promise that it will end our disunity. Actually made it worse. They forgot to consider that maybe Brexit is a fiery shit heap. So they are engaged in bitter infighting because, you know, there, there's though between those who want to stabilise international trade and relations and those who want to plunge the country into a perpetual state of chaos. Maybe there are some who just want the whole thing to go away. But beyond Elwood's lone call to rejoin the single market, there's little sign of it. So Labour are going to keep taking the initiative on issues time and again because they're focused on that. They're focused on the campaign. They're focused on the policies. They can be. You know, the infighting is no longer there. The Tories are going to keep insisting that, oh, it's all right, Labour carping from the sidelines, that we're the ones getting things done. No, nothing's getting done because they're busy arguing with each other. They'll get to the point where a general election suddenly has to be held and they'll all go, oh, is it that time already? Oh, uh, and they'll just have to panic and cobble together a campaign in the few weeks they've got left. Of course, it doesn't have to be like that. They could start to realise that they can make a fight of it if they united around pragmatic policies. But they won't because pragmatism was kicked out of the party years ago. It is still possible that Sunak has some plan to put the Northern Ireland Protocol arguments to bed. That will certainly help him. That will help the Tories do. But it's hard to see how he's going to do that right now. And if he does, it's hard to see how he's going to kick on and, and gain all the benefits from it because there's going to be bickering all down the line. So I can be confident, you know. Starmer sounds confident as well, saying he's already planning for his second term. I think make a success of the first term before getting too far ahead. But just because he says he's, he's planning for the second term doesn't mean he necessarily means it literally. Like some of his plans will naturally lead into a second term. Doesn't mean he's worked out the second term in the same detail as the first. For example, all the extra training places for doctors. Can't produce any actual doctors in the first term. Takes you a year to even put the places in place. 
And then, what, five years at university for a doctor, another junior house officer year, and a couple more years before you can actually become a GP or anything. So, yeah, you can't actually get any doctors as a result of that policy in the first term. So it naturally leads into the second, maybe even third. You know, it may have been above all an expression that he's so confident that people will appreciate his delivery that a second term will be a no-brainer for voters. Whereas the Conservatives are not even able to tell us what their plans are for the next month, and they are the ones in government. I mean, they're happy to talk about aims. You might go, oh, but Phil, you say they were going to do this, they're going to do that. Their aims. There's no policies, there's no plans for them. Mind you, it'll be no easy task for Labour when they do win. The current state of both the economy and public services is dire. After over a decade of mismanagement of both, and with Labour having to commit to the public's ill-conceived notion of economics as if it's like a household budget, that'll be difficult. Still, I suppose that the Tories are making such a hash of things that even modest improvements could yield noticeable gains. And that's what's needed, for the public to see that things are better under Labour, so that they get the time to make them objectively decent again. And that's based on what we know now. Things can get worse, yeah. If the current industrial action fails, for example, we could see a record exodus of staff from the NHS and education. That would be an absolute mountain to climb when they finally get into government. And so I still say they should bring in proportional representation during their second term, at least, if they want to preserve the progress that they're going to make. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.